Well, hey guys, I hope your week is going well. Um, it's early morning here. I'm, I'm leaning heavily on my coffee. Um, I wanted to come in and film this video for you guys all about aloe and skincare products and the use of aloe topically for, for skin, skincare. Because I came to realize through reading some, through some of your comments that I say um, things about aloe in a, in here and there in different videos and I think strung together what I have said about aloe when you put it all together is probably a very confusing message. So I figured it would be useful and helpful to clarify aloe in this dedicated video. So that's what I'm going to do today. Aloe vera is a perennial plant that is found uh, in tropical areas. It has been used for thousands of years in traditional medicine for uh, both internal use as well as applied topically to the skin for a variety of skin conditions and skin concerns. And I think everyone is familiar with the idea of putting aloe on the skin. Many people do this after they've sustained a sunburn because it feels soothing. And you will see aloe in many cosmetic products. And in the thumbnail today, I held up this Alba Botanica Sensitive Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30. Um, hopefully that's not misleading to you guys. You, hopefully you didn't click on this video thinking this was gonna be a review of this sunscreen. But this sunscreen has aloe leaf juice, so I thought I would hold it up as an example of the fact that you can find aloe in many skincare products. So, you know, you guys ask me questions. Is it safe? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it irritating? What's the deal? Um, and so aloe the plant, let's just take a step back. Aloe the plant has a few different components to it that, um, that can be helpful and a few different components that can be harmful. So the aloe leaf itself consists of something called pericyclic cells that are found just below the um, skin of the plant. Uh, it's kind of like part of the plant's skin. And these cells actually make this very bitter latex that is rife with a variety of compounds that can be very irritating. So in my videos when I've said aloe can be irritating, I'm speaking to the compounds that are largely produced in this latex. They include something called anthroquinones. Anthroquinones are compounds that, when applied topically, are actually phototoxins. Photo and, and meaning when, when you are exposed to ultraviolet light, you can develop a bad rash. The, the ultraviolet light reacts with the anthroquinones and can cause a really, really bad rash. Additionally, um, you know, people want to consume aloe, ingest aloe for, for other, other purposes, and these anthroquinone compounds are something called cathartics. In other words, they're laxative com compounds. Basically, draw water in very rapidly from your into your gut and result in ma mass tr massive mass transit, for lack of a better descriptor, and diarrhea. So that is a very very unpleasant and potentially dangerous outcome of ingesting aloe, depending on how much you ingest and the severity of the diarrhea and your underlying state of health. Um, you know, it can be quite dehydrating to do that. Uh, the, within this latex, um, the aloe plant also makes something called lignans, which are can be very irritating on the skin, agitate the skin barrier, but they're also penetration enhancers. So that means they increase the absorption and uptake of other compounds. And that, that can be advantageous. I say it can be advantageous because in topical formulation, if there's an ingredient that needs to get into the skin that has a hard time doing it, putting a penetration enhancer in the product can sometimes help with that. Um, how, which is, for example, propylene glycol does this, is a penetration enhancer. But the lignans in aloe vera can also act as penetration enhancers, and that's worrisome because penetration enhancers can be irritating and they can increase the absorption of other compounds so when that occurs you're at increased risk for problems for side effects to to other active ingredients and this is of concern because we prescribe patients topical steroids to to the skin that uh, you know 
if the if the absorption is too great, they're at a greater risk of side effects. So one such example that is you know potentially a concerning setup is because aloe is kind of uh, pursued for its soothing and calming properties. A lot of people with eczema and with rashes, um, you know, may want to use aloe, may try and use aloe on their skin, and they may also have been given a prescription steroid cream to use to treat the skin. And if they use it alongside the aloe, the aloe plant, there's a potential risk for greater absorption of that steroid medicine and greater risk of side effects. I have videos talking about the side effects of topical steroids. Um, so, you know, that, that is something that is concerning and, and a reason why I generally say, you know, don't, don't go pursuing the aloe plant, just, you know, kind of stick to basic, basic over-the-counter moisturizers. But then you go in the drugstore and you see aloe in over-the-counter products. Why is that if it's got these irritating compounds? Well, aloe um, also has a component to it, the aloe gel, which is that, that goopy stuff that, sque that you can squeeze out from, from the leaves. And aloe gel is, contains a variety of very nutritive compounds. It's rich in polysaccharides, as well as amino acids, lipids, a variety of things that are helpful put on the skin. And it is, it is largely water. Um, so those, those helpful components are kind of the minority of it. The rest of it is, is largely water. So it's, it's a nice hydrating, jelly-like substance that is moisturizing and, uh, you know, a skin conditioning agent. So cos cosmetic manufacturers and, um, have, you know, taken advantage of that and actually it can extract the the gel and purify it and include it in topical formulations in such a way that those irritating compounds have been removed and that's why you'll see on on the ingredient list things like aloe extract aloe leaf juice aloe leaf juice extract um, that's what that's what you're getting is you're not getting really pure aloe not only is aloe vera gel rich in Kind of water content as well as these nourishing factors. It's also a natural source of salicylic acid. Salicylic acid, I have a video on um, talking about why it's helpful. It's great um, for a variety of skin conditions. Um, and it also has um, magnesium lactate um, and a variety of um, compounds that are anti-inflammatory. And it also has a compounds that actually have been shown to um, inhibit uh, the enzyme tyrosinase, which is important for the synthesis of pigment. So aloe can be helpful in conditions in which there is hyperpigmentation or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So, you know, given this, I've told you that aloe vera gel is a skin conditioning agent. It's got salicylic acid, which can be anti-inflammatory as well as kind of help turn over um, built up scaly skin cells. And it's got a variety of polysaccharides. So people with inflammatory skin diseases, it's logical to think that aloe vera gel, you know, applied topically could be helpful as well as helpful in kind of reducing the degree of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that can occur. A lot of people with eczema suffer from that. So, you know, this is why I think in some of my videos, it probably sends a mixed message to you guys. Oh, it can be irritating. Oh, it can be helpful. Oh, it's got these good. So, you know, hopefully this video kind of clarifies. There's some different parts of the aloe plant. But with all that being said, is aloe and your skincare products safe? Absolutely. Aloe, aloe that you see on the ingredient list, aloe juice extract, aloe leaf extract, um, it is typically at a very, very low, the allowable concentration is very low, typically 0.1% or less. It can be as high as, as 20%. Um, and in these extracts, the anthraquinone levels, so the anthraquinone is a compound I told you about, could be phototoxic. Um, in, in, they ha the, the extracts have to meet industry standards for having no anthraquinones, and so they're very safe, it's not a risk. But it is potentially a risk if you go DIYing your own aloe, your own aloe masks and things like that, just by crushing up a plant, then, <clears throat> then you, you run into that risk. So the manufacturers filter, they process, they extract, they do a variety of things to remove those harmful compounds and only use the only be using the only be using the useful compounds. And it's there the aloe extracts are still used at a very low concentration within the product as a whole. 
And what they end up being, what ends up being in that product is mostly just water. So the aloe that you see is largely just going to be water at that point with a few potentially nourishing compounds, but at a very, very low concentration. Aloe extracts in your skincare products are very safe and do have the potential to be helpful, but aloe the plant on your skin, I would caution you against, given the anthraquinone compounds and the lignans that can increase penetration of other active ingredients. So, you know, that being said, I held up this sunscreen from Alba Botanica in the thumbnail. I hope it wasn't misleading you into thinking that this video was going to be a review of this sunscreen. I do really like it. Um, it's an SPF 30 water resistant sunscreen that is cruelty free. I get it on iHerb um, and it's very nice. It's a mineral sunscreen uh, with uh, no, no added fragrance and it has aloe leaf juice in it. Um, so, you know, you'll see it in a variety of products but it's present at a very low concentration and it's by and large just the water in the product. The other question that I get a fair amount about recently, maybe in the past six months or so, I've always talked to, I've talked about in other videos how I, um, I like the idea of getting the aloe vera gel from the drugstore, the fragrance-free aloe vera gels, and putting it into ice cube trays if you find yourself in the situation, God forbid, where you do have a sunburn, it feels fantastic to pop out those little ice cubes and put them on the sunburn. It's very soothing. Now, it's not going to undo the damage of the sunburn. It's not going to, to take it away, but it feels wonderful. <clears throat> but some of you called to my attention that some of the brands that I've recommended, like Fruit of the Earth or some of the aloe vera gels at CVS, have been called into question for um, false false marketing, false claims on the label. Uh, and I guess somebody <clears throat> tested out these different products and found that there was actually no aloe in them. And so they're currently, uh, there's currently a lawsuit going on. Some of you are like, well, do you still recommend it? What, what are your thoughts on it? Um, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you guys. I, I suppose uh, innocent until proven guilty, but it is concerning that that is going on. I still think the products, I always thought the products were good. Maybe they don't have any aloe in them, but they're still good. It's concerning though, if they're not disclosing the ingredients in a transparent way, then you have to wonder, is there something in there that shouldn't be in there? And I'm recommending something that has something bad in it. So. Long story short, because of that, I don't really, I kind of hold off on my recommendations for aloe because I don't want to recommend something that later on it turns out to not have, not have what it says it, it has in it. So I personally don't really use aloe like on a day-to-day -day basis. I have used the Fruit of the Earth aloe gel and loved it in the past in an ice cube tray form, like I said, two little kitchen kitchen burns, kitchen singes from the stove, from scalding water, it feels fantastic to pop those out and put the ice on, put the iced aloe, aloe on. Ice is, is very helpful if you get, if you get a little scald injury, but I, you know, if it doesn't actually have aloe in it, then, you know, that's, that's misleading, but I have no way of knowing that. And perhaps it does, and, you know, this person, it's, it's hard to know, you know, innocent until proven guilty, but, I, I will take a step back uh, about recommending anything with aloe in it. But uh, I've used many uh, K-Beauty brands of aloe, the um, Holica Holica aloe, it has fragrance in it, unfortunately. And uh, one other one, uh, Nature, Pure N Nature's Republic, Nat something with the term nature in it that I got on iHerb. I like that one a lot, and I actually used it as a shave, shave gel. So hopefully this video was helpful, kind of giving you some information about aloe, the plant, the different components. I definitely don't think you should crush up the plant and put it on your skin. Um, but when I see aloe juice, water, aloe leaf extract in skincare products, it doesn't scare me. I know it's present in a low concentration and the bad stuff has been removed. Um, but the fact that, you know, products claiming to be aloe gel that, you know, are coming under question, that that is a little unsettling and I don't really have much to say at this point about that. So, um, you know, hopefully this helps you make a better decision for yourself. But uh, yeah, um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.